hardly seems like a year since you left us. We love you. And we miss you. Daddy, is mommy on the ground? Yes, son, she is. Well, then dig her up. So much for memorial moments. Yesterday. I'm sorry, Truvy. What did I do now? Some of split ends are stuck all over my purple passion. Ew. Split ends? Well, that must be Janice Van Meter. And now! I've been baptized. Once was enough. Thank you. I'm sorry, Miss Weezer. But if you just wouldn't jiggle your head around quite so much. Go ahead. You know what that Janice Van Meter said to me? She was out walking that rat of hers. It's a peek -a It's a rat. And anyway, she had the nerve to say that I should keep Rat on a shorter leash, that he was a nuisance to the entire neighborhood. Weezer, we'll tear the door down. Shut up, Rat. We're not talking to you. Oh, I'm wet. You <gasps> dumb dog, will you please get out of the way? In the yard, in the yard. Where I never. Morning, Truby. What's the matter, honey? I've just had a cosmetic tragedy. Oh, so it's sorry. all my fault. Larry, I'm not speaking to you. Guess today's my lucky day. Told you time and again I don't like hearing the farm report at 6 a.m. Sleep late. Move it back to 5.30 where it was. And have my breakfast at six. Aww. Well, I don't like hearing about pork butts when I'm eating my prunes. Believe it or not, Weezer, when I program our radio station, I have to take more things into consideration than your eating habits. Tea, Miss Clary? Oh, lemon, honey. Okay. Clary. What? I think it's high time you get back to your roots, if you know what I mean. Oh. Pretty soon I'm going to have to disavow any knowledge of your hair, dude. Not today, honey. Maybe later. I have to get to the office. Elise is at a station manager's convention in New Orleans, and I'm having to run the place. Oh, Elise Forbes is so pretty. Oh, she's smart as a whip. <laughs> I never met this Elise, but I know lots about her. Tongues are wagging. Louisa, she has only been in town a couple of months now. There is nothing to know. Fine, fine. Have it your way. Oh, look, Clary. Read about facelifts. My mama always says, gossip is the devil's nightly news. How is your mother, Nell? She been released from that institution yet? Any day now. Weezer. Well, anyway, everybody knows that Elise is dating Jackson Latchery. What? You see, everybody does not know that. Sister Ralph saw them at the Waddle Inn, splitting a foot-long hot dog. Well, I saw them walk along the riverbank last Saturday night. Fact, not gossip. Why am I always the last to know? I'm not so sure you are the last to know. You mean Melinda doesn't know? She hasn't mentioned it. And if she knew, I'm sure she would have told me. After all, I am her glamour technician. Oh, boy, that's exactly what Melinda needs right now. How's she doing? Well, what with the first anniversary of Shelby's death and everything, it's just... Oh, such a sad tragedy. If I were Malin and this was the first anniversary of my daughter's death, the fact that my daughter's husband was starting to date up again would not be one of the top ten things that I would want to deal with. Therefore, she will not hear about it in my shop. Who will not hear about what in your shop? Janice Van Meter and her tragic complexion problem. 
Oh, Ruby, I hope you don't mind my bringing Jack Jr. Oh, no. I'll just see if my pride and joy is awake. Louie! Front and center! Miss Malin, your grandson's growing like a weed. He's a sight. Mm, so full of mischief. Just like his daddy. What? Your babysitting. Hey! Jack, sir! Booster! Come on, dude. I'm gonna give you some lessons in coolness. No cost you. you pierce that child's ear, you gator bait. Aw, oh, Malin, honey. What's the matter? Tell Truvy. I'm too young to be this old. Smile. Increases your face value. Uh, we've been taking care of Jack Jr. this week. Where's his daddy? Oh, Jackson's been working on a case in New Orleans. Mmm. New Orleans. Now, what did I just hear? Somebody else went to New Orleans. You know, I have always wanted to go to New Orleans. It's sort of um, a fantasy of mine. <laughs> well, get in your car and drive that way for three hours. It is not exactly an unattainable goal. Clary, can you say something about your new station manager going to New Orleans? Well, yes. I believe Elise is in New Orleans. Mm. Is that sweater new? No, no, this is Shelby's. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it was her favorite. She loved pink, didn't she? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I've never met Elise. Milan? Have you? No, but Clary tells me she's fitting right in. <laughs> <laughs> Pity Panda's alive and well. Here you go. Dust him off. Kids, where do they get their energy? You remember when we were young and I had dreams and ambitions and naturally blonde hair and you used to smile occasionally? This last week has been... I know. First place stress and trauma shows up is in your hair and honey, you've got some funky follicles. Well, it's no wonder... Jack Jr. hasn't been sleeping. He's not eating. Yes, he's night tears. I'm worried about him. Well, you're the head honcho of the mental guidance center. Take him down there and get his little head drunk. Well, I have been thinking about letting him talk to Dr. Fontenot. But if I do... Uh -uh. Then... You know my policy. Don't think. Do. Is there a tree? And this the squirrel. And where is the squirrel's head? Over here. Yeah. Here, look, I have something for you. Let's go see your grandmama, okay? All right. Nick, they're all pink. Pink was Shelby's favorite color. She was obsessed by it. And here is her son expressing himself artistically using the color pink. Why, it's amazing. It was the only crayon I could find, man. Oh. Well, what do you think, then? Symbol insecurity. Oh, but he gets so much love, Nick. Drum thinks we may be smothering him. That's not the point. He understands love. He has great affection for these animals he's decapitated. Decapitated? Oh, my gosh. Lynn, now you know all Jack Jr. needs is to feel grounded. He needs a home. That's easier said than done. Thank you. Oh, look at this. Here's a picture he drew of himself hugging Shelby. Uh, that's not Shelby. That's Jackson's girlfriend. Tommy, why don't you run and uh, 
Daddy's Phelps screwdriver off the table. Okay. Be nice. You know me. Too well. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jackson. Well, hello, Jackson. Where's Jack? Oh, he's over at Clary's. He'll be back in a minute. So how's New Orleans? Hot? Sticky? <laughs> was it a scorcher? Oh, I'll bet it was. Yeah. So did you win your case? Yeah. It wasn't easy, though. Well, I hope you were able to make a little time for yourself. Nope. Worked my butt off. <laughs> Everybody okay? Everybody having fun? Yeah. Yeah, Jackson here's just handing me a load of manure. Good. Wouldn't dig too deep in that manure if I were you, Malin. Daddy! Hey, little buddy! Oh! <laughs> You've been having a good time? Yes, sir. Well, that's neat. Where'd you get that? The doctor gave it to me. The doctor? You went to the doctor? Yes, but he's fine. Jack Jr., honey, why don't you run inside? Your grandfather's about to operate machinery and none of us are safe. Come on, son. Come on. Anything the matter? No, no. I just took him to see Dr. Fontenot. Fontenot? Who's that? Oh, Dr. Fontenot is a doctor down at the center. You took my son to the mental guidance center? Yes, I did. It wasn't exactly an appointment. Hold it. Why'd you do that? Jackson, he's not eating, he's not sleeping. I was worried about him. You should have talked to me first. I only did it to ease my mind. Don't you think I should decide what my son needs? Jackson, he's insecure. Everybody's always leaving him. Shelby's gone. You left him to run off to New Orleans. Wait a minute. I did not run off to New Orleans. I do have a job, you know. You could have called me. Oh, I could have called you, Jackson. But I didn't want to interrupt anything now, did I? Jack, get your stuff together. Time to go. You want to tell me about Elise Forbes? <sighs> Where'd you hear about Elise? Just about everywhere but the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> hey, I saw you two at the ball game. She's a babe. Help daddy with a blower, son. Am I the only person in this town who's missed a reel of this movie? So that's what this is all about. You could have mentioned this babe to me, Jackson. That gets your approval, you mean? Jackson, don't be such a jerk. Oh, I'm a jerk. Jack, come on. Jackson. Jackson, I'm sorry. You're not a jerk. I'm just touchy, that's all. I'm touchy, you're touchy. Let's forget we said all this and try and put Jack Jr. first, okay? Whatever you say, Malin. Hey there, little buddy. Let's go. Bye, darling. Choke it. Bye, sweetheart. Finish reading that article on plastic surgery? Clary, you're not seriously thinking about plastic surgery, are you? Maybe. You're a widow. There's no such thing as natural beauty. Stupid woman your age trying to make her face look like a baby's butt. I was only thinking about it. For your information, it is perfectly safe, all of it. Face, eyes, breasts. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Breasts? What do you want breasts for? Who's going to see them? You never know. Clary, surgery is always risky. And besides, what would the neighbors say? I can't think of anything more embarrassing than to die having your breasts done. Well, if I do, bury me topless. I think we're hitting the danger zone on the tachymeter. Miss Malin, Truvy and I are going to put fresh flowers in the church tomorrow in Shelby's memory. I think carnations, her favorite. Thank you. That is so sweet. How are things? No better, Truvy. I suppose what will be will be. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Yes. It'll all work out. Just look for the sign. What 
you talking about? Okay. I guess I have to tell you a true story that really happened to my family. Oh, good. Another tale from Hillbilly Holler. Weezer, you go on, honey. Okay. Well, one day, Aunt Jim and Uncle Ferd, they were having an argument about whether or not they should enclose the carport or buy a new washer dryer. Well, smack dab in the middle of their fight, the phone rang. And the voice on the other end told them that they had won a year's supply of plywood. Well, we realized that that was a sign. They were meant to enclose their carport. <gasps> that was not a sign. That was common sense. If they'd have won a year's supply of dirty clothes, they'd have bought the washer dryer. Miss Weezer, if I choose to believe the 25 sheets of plywood are a sign, they are a sign. Oh, boy, here she goes. It is a free country. I have a right to my beliefs, whatever they may be. You have a right to your beliefs, too, if you had any. I mean that in the kindest, most caring way. Hello? My hello? Hi, come on in. Oh. Hi. Hi. Please. What a surprise. <laughs> Welcome. These are the usual suspects. You already know Clare. And Anel. This is Weezer Boudreau. Weezer. And this is Malin Eatonton. Oh, hi. Well, I've heard so much about you. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Nice to meet you. I, I know Saturday mornings are just for you ladies of the neighborhood, but well, Truby just insisted that I come by today. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll just go get you a smock, and Annelle will go get you some coffee before she shampoos you. <laughs> oh, now I should warn you. I put a teensy bit of cinnamon in it for an unexpected kick. <laughs> oh, and we have muffins. Since this is your first Saturday, take your pick. Do you have a preference? Oh, definitely, that one. Well, this is going to sound so silly from someone my age, but, but I'm just wild about pink. <laughs> I just love it. I should do it right there, kiddo. All right. Thanks, kiddo. Kato. Hi. Malin? What are you doing here? Well, I was looking for you. What are you doing? Jack wants a swing like the one in Grandma's backyard. So, he's getting one. Just being a good daddy. Well, he's gonna love it. Yeah. This way we won't have to come over and bother y'all every time he wants to swing. Jack. He knows he's never a bother. Jackson. Jackson. <sighs> there has been just too much tension between all of us. Yeah, Malin. I've been thinking. Maybe things would be better if Jack and I just moved. Far away. Well, that is your right. Where you choose to live is your own business. You do realize, of course, if you did that, I would have to have you killed. Yeah, I figured that. Jackson, I realize Jack Jr. is your son. I only want what's best for him. Then we agree. Well, that'll be the day. <laughs> Jackson, please, don't shut me out. He's all we've got. 
Come on, Blair. You okay? Yeah. Uh, I haven't been sleeping much lately. Jack wakes up every hour on the hour. Monsters are chasing. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know what that aha uh -huh means, Melinda. Jackson. Monsters are chasing all of us. We gotta fight them. Does Dr. Font know? He know what he's doing? Well, he's the best counselor we have at the clinic. Would you talk to him about seeing Jack? Well, I could. But you're his father. You ought to make the appointment. Okay. Bye, Jackson. Oh, Jackson. One other thing. Elise. <laughs> Elise, this is a rough one. The fact that you're dating is hard on me. Please try and understand. It's weird. But then so is life. Elise and I are just friends. I need friends. Don't worry. Oh, Jackson, I'm not worried. You definitely got your good points. And I realize there's one thing I can always trust about you. You got great taste. Because once upon a time, you married my daughter. Red ready because Cagney and Lacey's Sharon Glass returns to series television Monday nights this fall. The Trials of Rosie O'Neill coming to CBS.